<laughs> Sometimes I like doing social experiments, man. And and I, I'm just going to start by saying I, too, used to believe what they fed me, man. You know what I mean? And, and you do your research and you get to the core of things. I'm going to simplify what Jackie Robinson simply is. So let's say you're a doctor, you're a teacher, you're a carpenter, you're an electrician, you're a Uber driver. If you are a school teacher and you've put your kids through college, put your kids through school, they tell you to go across the street to the other teacher because that teacher makes more money and is more popular than you to give up your rights and go work for them. Would you do that? <laughs> You know, and and it's, it's it's just a simple solution to this, man. I um, they got you believing that you must join the team, you must be accepted by the dominant society to be great. When actuality in the forties, fifties, and sixties, God and marriage was in eighty percent of black families' households, right? And now it it done flip flop, like it's like thirty percent now. And, and that all stems from, you can call, with the, I think it was the Housing Act of 1968, you can do that. And, 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 and also, Jackie Robinson, I'm going off memory, 1947, opening day 1947, they trained him to, you know, uh, you, you got to be respectful. If you get spit on, they call you the N-word, you got to be respectful, right? But you know y'all never knew this. The Negro League integrated in 1946, the year before. Do you get what I'm saying? The Negro League integrated with a first white player in 1946. I th believe his name was Eddie Kemp. Uh, I haven't done this in a long time. K-E-L-P or K-E-L-B. Y'all go, go do your home and do your research. And let's take it a step further. Did you know that the Negro League played in Yankee Stadium? The Negro League played in Fenway Park. The Yankee played in what was now, I think it's Candom Yards, where the Baltimore Orioles play, where the Chicago White Sox, where uh, uh, Wrigley Field. The Negro League played in all these baseball diamonds. And when you do your research, you'll learn that the Negro League in many of these cities and, and on in many of their dates, outdrew, had more attendance than the MLB. So what the MLB did is they aligned themselves with the owners of the of Comiskey Park and Wrigley Field, and they said, We don't want Negro League baseball teams playing in our fields. <laughs> you get it? So now they have no place to go. So what they did was they downsized and they got smaller stadiums and they and and what they did too, they bought those stadiums. And that's why when you go down south, you see all the minor league teams or what? Playing down south in small arena and small diamonds where the Negro Leagues used to be. <laughs> I'm not saying Jackie Robinson is a terrible person. But what I'm what I'm telling you is Jackie Robinson, what Jackie Robinson and Branch Rickey created was for you to give up everything that you've worked for. The thousands, the hundreds of thousands of jobs and the millions of dollars that the Negro League was creating if you compare it to a 2024 dollar. <laughs> we would have been better off, man. And, and that's simply what I'm saying. And 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 I want you guys to do your research. Google the names. Nobody that you've never been taught. I know nine out of 10 of y'all never knew that the Negro League integrated in 1946. <laughs> integrated. First, he was a pitcher, Eddie Kemp or something like that. You know, so. Um, so y'all go ahead and keep on eating what they feed you and keep on believing Jackie Robinson is such a great guy. No, Jackie Robinson opened up the door for you to give up ownership. Right. Give up power of your life. Oh, you're going to go make more money. With no ownership, with no power. Now you can't employ your community. Now you don't own the industries.
Now, after you do your research, then you come back and say, you know what? God damn, I never knew that. But the scary part about this is the reality is people don't want to be accountable and responsible for knowing the truth. And I'm not mad because, you know, I I'm a public school educated kid. I went to a private college and I I got my postgraduate, some of my postgraduate work at a at a state school. So I get it. But at some point, you got to wake up and start doing your own research and get to the core get to the fundamental truth, the baseline of it, you know, the, the fundamentals of it. You know, it, it's like I was having a conversation with someone earlier. I says, people don't even know that there's no such thing as an HBCU. Oh man, what are you saying, Fred? Don't you know many of these HBCUs were plantations? Don't get mad at me. We gonna start with probably one of the, the more famous, Booker T. Washington. We'll start with Tuskegee University. Is it Tuskegee Institute now? Tuskegee, you know, uh, University. Do your research on Tuskegee University. We all know about the syphilis, right? What they did with black men. But check out how they became a college. I'm not saying Booker T. Washington is a terrible person, but what I'm telling you is how we've been programmed to eat what they feed us. We couldn't have slavery, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to educate them. And then you know what we're going to do? We're going to tell them who their heroes are. We're going to tell them who their leaders are. <laughs> man, your father and your mother are your heroes, man. We're going to start there and we're going to stop there. Y'all go ahead and have a great Saturday evening. And uh, I'm going to finish my workout. I'll talk to y'all soon. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do more of this because sometimes I just get inspired just to do social experiments on my social media platform. <laughs> Peace, y'all.